Well, who knows if there's a political future for the left. If there'll be a political future, it'll depend on us making it, or rather, uh, a, your young generation making it. Well, I think what's happened in uh, the UK and the US in the last four years uh, is something that has not happened for three generations in those societies. There was a short bridge uh, in those countries from Occupy, in Britain there was a smaller Occupy but there was a significant anti-austerity movement, uh, to this r remarkable turn to politics. I think one has to say that in both cases, it was generated by an explicitly socialist politician, uh, making it seem viable to enter the electoral arena. And it is very much the case that if you're not heard in the media as a socialist and in the mainstream media, you're only heard in little pockets like we're talking to right now. Uh, and, you know, I think everyone was surprised. When Jeremy Corbyn managed to squeeze enough nominations uh, from the Parliamentary Labour Party to put his name on the ticket after Ed Miliband was defeated and resigned, a young man I know, and some of you may know, Max Shanley, who's been a very active figure on the young British left, uh, rang me uh, and said, isn't this great, Corp has been nominated. And I said, well, it's fine, but you know we can't be elected. Uh, and I was wrong. Uh, and I think there were two reasons I was wrong. One, I hadn't realized that a layer of young social media savvy people had in the face of the austerity moment, and to some extent by virtue of Ed Miliband, Obama-like, but maybe a little better than Obama, because he really is an ethical socialist, even if he's a mainstream politician in other ways. Uh, he had, by virtue of breaking with the Blairites over Iraq above all, he had led a group of young people to create a social media outlet called Red Labor in 2012 with a view to kind of changing the young labor wing of the Labour Party, which has always been a bunch of student politicians who want to go on to become career politicians in the most conventional sense. But more than that, they were, you know, hoping to get the kind of campaign for Labour Party democracy spirit going again. And, and they had prepared an infrastructure that when Corbyn got nominated, suddenly was an infrastructure making it possible for him to win. He didn't expect this himself. He went to the Tall Puddle Martyrs rally in Cornwall uh, shortly after he was elected and spoke to hundreds of trade unionists there and said, I'm in this in order to show that we're still a force, in order to show that we still have a presence, The very, which was marvelous. But the very notion that he might actually win this, I think that wasn't on the cards for any of them. Uh, and then people started joining the party in droves, in the hundreds of thousands. Uh, young teachers left their jobs being teachers and organized momentum. Um, and and it, it changed the political landscape. Something similar happened with Bernie. It's like, again, social media savvy young people who, you know, were not only fed up with Clinton, but fed up with Obama. Um, and were out protesting, uh, saw Bernie's courage to speak as an open socialist uh, as something remarkably fresh. And this led the DSA, which had some 6,000 members, I think the average age was, age was 68, right, to become now 60,000 members with an average age of 30. Uh, now, are they 
just caught up in the electoral illusion. I mean, even if Bernie were elected, and he's not going to get, it's harder for him to get the Democratic nomination than to actually win the election. Um, but were he to be elected, he'd be largely isolated inside the imperial American state uh, in, in the White House. Uh, I think a lot of the best people in the DSA, and I think this is true in Momentum and the World Transformed too, uh, which organizes these remarkable conferences and political education networks, uh, among young people in Britain. I think what they recognize is that, and I hope enough of them recognize this, is that while it's important to get the visibility that electoral politics gives you, and it's very important in the long run to see that as the only likely path into the state, that this is a long run process. And really what they're engaged in is class formation. Really what they're engaged in is using the ballot and the ticket as a way to link up with community groups, as a way to engage in electoral strategies that aren't necessarily about, we're gonna change the world in this election, but are about beginning to recreate a organized, conscious, very broad sense of what is the working class. Certainly the Bread and Roses Coalition inside uh, the DSA see it that way uh, and you know they explicitly say yeah we'll get involved in an electoral campaign but we see that as a means of making links with people in communities with trade union militants for a much longer run struggle um, un you know surprisingly given that there's a, a more coherent socialist consciousness in the Labour Party that's less present as a clear strategic thrust in momentum than it is in the, D in, in the Bread and Roses Coalition of the DSA at the moment. Now, look, uh, this is, you know, something that one needs to be very cautious about um, because the new parties that have formed that inspired people in the decade, in the run-up to this, Syriza, Delinka, Podemos, have not been able to do this. My great criticism of Syriza is not that they were forced to have to back down in the face of the EU, but they couldn't act as a new f force for class development in, in Greece. They picked up the sense that we were all being forced to bleed in the country, but they weren't uh, a force that really could organize a new class consciousness. Uh, and Delinka in Germany has not been able to do that as well. I remember being there in 2008, the 50th anniversary of 1968, and they organized, the young youth of Delinka organized the conference. I asked a lot of them what went on at party branches boring resolutions on what you bring to the next conference. They weren't centers of the community. And that has to be the goal. Um, and uh, so, you know, this is not easy. But the fact that there's generations of young people all over the place who want to do this, and that it does cohere with explosions of dissent, like in Chile today, right? is, I think, promising for the left globally.